growing up, our parents would always remind us, don't talk to strangers. And it makes sense because kids are vulnerable, and daming krimen, di ba, sa society, and they have to be protected. But somehow, we've brought that mindset with us as we grew older. We treat people like ghosts. The people that we encounter when we're grocery shopping around our neighborhood, we don't even make eye contact with them. This world is broken. What if that, that stranger needed to talk to someone like you? All of us are broken. All of us are sinful. All of us are helpless. But 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ died on the cross for all of our sins. And now if we believe in Him and if we trust in Him and if we choose to give our lives to Him and love Him, then we have hope of eternity with Him in heaven. And what if that person needs to know about that hope? What if that person needs to hear what you can tell them exactly at that moment? I'm reminded of the story from Acts chapter 3. It was of Peter and John. Jesus just ascended to heaven and all the disciples were so on fire. They wanted to tell the world about the hope that they have in Jesus. So Peter and John were walking to the temple to pray and then they saw a lame beggar. He was asking for alms. They looked at him straight in the eyes and Peter said, look at me. And it really struck me. I want to share with you three things. The first one is look people in the eyes. Why? What's the significance? When we look people in the eyes, it means that we are eager to know how they are. We are eager to know if there is a need in their lives that we can meet. Sometimes we try to ignore people, not look at them, because we don't want to be inconvenienced. We don't want to see how they're struggling. We don't want to our schedules to be interrupted. But Peter and John looked him in the eyes and they wanted to know how they can help the man. Look people in the eyes. The second one is love people unconditionally. I was mulling over that line, look at me. Why was the beggar not looking at them? Probably out of shame. Maybe the beggar was seen as a shameful man in society. But he, Peter said, look at us. In short, he was saying, there's nothing to be ashamed of. We want to help you. Look at us. They loved the beggar unconditionally just as Jesus did. And the third one is see a need that they can meet. Eventually, as you read through that, Peter said, I don't have silver or gold, but I can give you what I do have. I have Jesus, and he has the power to heal you. He shared the hope that he had in Jesus, and that moment changed the life of that beggar. I want to share with you a story. Um, I go to the park almost every day. Um, I go there to exercise in the mornings, and as much as possible, I try to connect with people, um, with my neighbors. I look them in the eyes, I try to smile at them, wave at them, try to start a conversation if possible. And one day, two weeks ago, I think, a group of seven to ten year olds, rowdy kids, they, they were playing at the park. And they were looking at me, so I smiled, I waved, and then I started my routine. I started jumping rope, and they got curious. They stopped, and if you can imagine, they huddled around me. <laughs> and when I was doing push-ups, when I was doing squats, they were trying to copy, to imitate the routine that I was doing. And so I tried to engage them in conversation. We got to talk. I taught them how to do the routines. I asked them who they were, uh, where they were studying. I asked them about their families. I got to know them. And I really felt like they enjoyed my company. But as I was talking to them, I noticed something. My heart broke for the way they were raised. They were cursing each other, pushing each other. They even told me a story of how they got a wallet and spent all the money that they got there from there. And so at that moment, I said, I can't let 
the opportunity pass, if I can share the hope of Jesus to these kids, I shouldn't let the opportunity pass, especially if I've grown to have a relationship with them, a friendship with them. And so after that day, they said goodbye. And they said, Ate, babalik kami ah. <laughs> Magkikita daw kami ulit dun sa park. And that moment, I started praying for them. And just this weekend, they went back. To my surprise, they were there again. We did the same things, but eventually, I got to ask them if they knew God. And I took out my phone. I opened the video because they're kids and their attention span is short. So I opened the video about the gospel, about Jesus' love for them. They, they tried to watch it. I translated it into Tagalog because they couldn't understand English as much. And they were so engaged. They were listening. One of the kids even said, Ate, naiyak na ako. Ate, gawin natin to ulit araw-araw. And at that moment, they prayed to accept Jesus Christ in their lives. And I don't know if their hearts were genuine. I don't know if they comprehended it fully. But all I know is that God intentionally placed them in my life so that I can share the hope that I have in Him. And I can only pray that it would really sink deep in their hearts and it would change their lives and up until they become adults. How about you? That stranger that you sit beside on the bus, that stranger that you encounter at the grocery, or that neighbor that you never even got to talk to. Why talk to them? Why talk to strangers? Because you may be the only person who would share the hope of Jesus to them. Music